Today I have some beautiful prompt ideas for mid-journey portraits that you should try right away. Hello my friends, how are you doing? It's a beautiful day to be creative. This is a collaboration with Robomar, so check out his Instagram account. Also check out my live stream on Sunday. Let's get started. So to get the most out of your prompts, I want to suggest to you to keep the prompts rather short. All of these prompts are for minus minus test. This is why we have this beautiful realistic look. The first First one is colorful kaleidoscope and this gave us a result we totally didn't expect but it's so beautiful I love the colors I love all these kind of patterns that are all over the picture all over the face but it works so well and is so expressive I kind of think I want to print this and hang it on my wall Next, we're going to have some fun and this is a bobblehead prompt, which is really cool. It gives you so funny and interesting results. It looks very realistic, like actual plastic, like you almost feel like you can grab this thing out of your monitor and you can create any kind of person, any kind of character or hero as a bobblehead picture. That's so amazing. Next, we have the Pixar Disney style. And yes, I know these are brand names, but you are creating your own works. And as you can see, it's really beautiful with the colors, the lighting, the design of the character. You can have a lot of fun with that. And it works really beautifully and easy with prompts. I'm absolutely in love with this style. Let's go a little bit classic here with a rough charcoal drawing in the style of Kate Kollwitz. This is why it's so artistic in the background with all these squiggly lines. I love the expressiveness. I love also how Midjourney is not just creating the shadows, but also uses highlights here with a white pastel on top of the darker tones to create more contrast and a better 3D shape absolutely mind-blowing. Next we're gonna have some fun again with the carved in wood style. We tried wood carving but Midjourney wouldn't take it but carved in wood works beautifully and gives you a style that actually looks like what the artistic technique how the elements are designed as you would do with the wood and how this is glued on top of the brighter wood. So this actually follows the process on how you would actually do that. Also Midjourney put some cracks here into the wood makes everything a little bit rougher. So overall just an amazing style. Here we have low poly and I also added colorful. This is why you get so many different colors in here and everything looks so dimensional and dynamic and expressive. I really enjoy that. And also you can use this as an inspiration for vector art. So this is a really great way to design or prepare this kind of low poly vector style and then convert it afterwards with an online tool or by hand. Here we have another classic style for this I used carved in stone. That's pretty important, not stone carving or anything like that. And as you can see, again, it works beautiful. And when we zoom in here, again, this is using the techniques you actually would use. Also down here, you see for the necktie and these kind of elements here, as you would do that in stone with the thickness of the material and also the roughness on how you would create that in stone. Really, really amazing how Midjourney figures that out. The next style is a favorite of everybody, the good old bokeh balls. Here we have colorful bokeh balls and you can see with this realistic style of the portraits at the same time, we have a shallow depth of field and then we have these beautiful colorful bokeh balls over all of the image. You can create so many beautiful portraits, so expressive styles with that. And of course, you could even combine this with your real photography if you want to. So this has so much potential. Next, we have another classic style, watercolor painting. That's the important part here, the watercolor painting. So you get more of this classic style. Sometimes you get these edges here where the watercolor is just flowing out into the paper and then stopping really beautiful, very realistic. I also like how this is actually using watercolor paper as the background and look at these amazing details here and how it is fading out into a more abstract style on the edges. Also at this point, keep in mind, you can use all of these techniques to create beautiful prints, for example, cards for the seasons, for the holidays, for different festivities, all these kind of things. 
in that beautiful watercolor painting style. Next, let's go a little bit funky again with splatter paint style. Now, I know that this is not exactly splatter paint 100%. It's more a photography or sometimes a painting with color splatters on top of it. But I love the style and it really looks very colorful, very interesting. Also because of colorful, not just for the splatters, but also for how vibrant and saturated the image is overall. So I'm absolutely loving this style and how it just is dynamic and fresh and playful. Absolutely try that out. The next one is also watercolor, but not watercolor painting. So you can see that this style is a little bit fresher and more modern. And it again has such beautiful details as you would paint. You see how the colors are layered here on top of each other. Really beautiful. Very nice detail here in the hair too, but not too much. So it keeps with the style. And again, as you can see here with the texture, we have that watercolor paper. Again, amazing opportunity to create really beautiful prints with this technique and be amazingly creative. Here we have the pop art style. This comes with a lot of variations. It's always really beautiful. And you might think, hey, this is the same thing as Kaleidoscope. Not really, because you can see when you zoom in here, how this is more a painting style. It's a little bit more classic from the artistic expression. And the way the colors are used and combined is more loud and more fun. The thing you would expect from something called pop right? And as a little bonus, we have carved in marble. Also very beautiful. Love the texture. I love also how the stone looks because marble is a little bit opaque. The light goes a little bit below the surface before it comes back. So you can see this in here and it is just mind blowing how beautiful this turned out. Also, as you can see here in the background, we actually have a marble background too. That's just amazing. Leave a like if this inspired you and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.